In the UK, Brexit is back on the agenda and things are not going well. A week of talks between British and European officials has ended in deadlock and recriminations on both sides. With time running out, the UK insists it will still finally say goodbye with or without a trade deal by the end of the year. Lawrence Lee is live in Dorchester in the southwest of England. Lawrence, it sounds very much that uh, now that the COVID situation has changed in the UK, it's back to business for the government and nothing seems to be going right. No, no. And as you said, they've just concluded a full week of talks uh, and they've got absolutely nowhere from the sound of it. Michel Barnier, who's the, Euro uh, the, the, the European negotiator, is due to give a press conference in half an hour. So we'll see what his mood's like. But the repeated complaint from the Europeans has been that the British say they want a deal but then keep setting impossible terms, and so they can't get anywhere. And remember, June was supposed to be the final deadline for a framework for a deal which would allow the UK to leave at the end of the year with some sort of deal. And so time is now vanishingly uh, short. And of course, you've now got the pandemic to deal with at the same time. And as it's turned out, uh, with a no-deal Brexit looking increasingly likely, you find supporters of that no-deal Brexit saying increasingly, well, look, if we can deal with the pandemic, then Brexit's nothing for us. So they're almost trying to make a virtue out of it. And it's here on the fields of England, really, that that argument is being played out. It won't pick itself, and they have to get a move on, because this company produces a million bags of salad leaves a week. For years, workers from Poland have harvested it. But just as this season began, all the airspace closed and they couldn't come. Faced with a crisis on its hands, the farm did something it has never done before, asked British people to do it. I was pretty determined that I wasn't going to lose the crop. So, uh, yeah, it was it, it was on the cards. Yeah, there's no doubt. If you don't get the team in and you don't have the staff, the, the machinery that we harvest with can't operate. This team then is made up almost entirely of furloughed British workers like James. He's a fitness instructor, but with gyms closed and a wife and baby at home, he needed the cash. Yeah, I mean, we're outdoors all day long, so we're probably in the best environment, not like the NHS where everybody's, you know, sort of in those confined spaces with all the PPE and all the rest of it. So I'm, I'm thinking for myself very lucky to be out here and I've, I've got a job. Get out of the house. The idea of a British land army dates to World War II, and that patriotic spirit underpins this current TV advert as well. It's part of a campaign called Pick for Britain, and they even recruited royalty for it. Now, I do not doubt that the work will be unglamorous and at times challenging, but it is of the utmost importance, and uh, at the height of this global pandemic, you will be making a vital contribution to the national effort. So British workers are helping feed the nation in the middle of the pandemic. Supporters of Brexit will say, if we can do this, we can do anything. Disruption to food supplies has always been one of the strongest arguments against a no-deal Brexit. And yet since the pandemic came here, there's been panic buying, queues for hours to get into a supermarket, and yet the food supply chain has remained remarkably resilient. Quite by accident, it seems the pandemic might have given the British government an argument as to why a no-deal Brexit might not be so bad after all. But if these people go back to their old jobs next year, then who does the job then? The UK wants to restrict numbers of seasonal fruit and vegetable pickers to just 10,000, when in reality the country needs seven times that many. The estimate is we might need 70,000 maybe over the whole season, over the country. Uh, so, you know, we, we just need to make sure that the, the arrangements are there so that if we do need people to come in, they can, you know, Brexit notwithstanding. There are very many people on both sides of the English Channel who say it would be the height of madness for the UK to push ahead with Brexit at all in the middle of the biggest healthcare crisis for 100 years. The collision of Brexit and the virus promises to make the British government's position even more controversial. So the talks have gone into a deadlock. What happens next? Uh, well, it, it, frankly, it isn't clear, partly because the pandemic has sucked all the air out of everything. Uh, and so Brexit's hardly on the news, Rob, to, to be honest with you, in this country, which is extraordinary, uh, given its prominence last year. And in that sense, supporters of No Deal are getting a, a bit of a free pass at the moment. But it is very concerning that apart from putting food on the table, the other thing that's in absolute chaos at the moment is manufacturing. And there is not a week goes by without a very big 
company Rolls-Royce sort of size announcing thousands of redundancies. In April, the UK manufactured a grand total of 197 cars. So, you know, the pandemic has absolutely decimated um, uh, 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 the, the, the whole manufacturing sector. And then this week, Nissan, which employs thousands of people in the north of England, came out and said, if there's a no-deal Brexit, they will have to shut down in the UK as well. And so you get the collision of these two things, and it is really scary. But as I said before, there is not very much time left now at all to salvage any sort of trade deal with the European Union. That's Lawrence Lee giving us that update from the southwest of England. Thanks, Lawrence.